hi guys let's talk about furosemide so furosemide is a loop diuretics and it is highly efficacious it can be used in case of pulmonary edema left ventricular failure it can give very relief in these cases and high efficacy as means it is causes high amount of diuresis it also works even in severe renal failure and that is the importance of furosemide so what is the mechanism of action of furosemide it acts mainly on the sodium potassium chloride co-transporter that is present in the thick ascending loop of henley and uh, therefore it is uh, called loop diuretics because it acting on the loop of henley let's uh, understand how the normal mechanism of sodium potassium chloride co-transporter works so in the thick ascending loop of henley it is very important to maintain the gradients osmotic gradients between medulla and cortex it actively absorbs sodium potassium and chloride so when the furosemide comes from the blood it is uh, rarely metabolized and it is freely secreted in the, the GFR and also it is secreted in the proximal tubule by the organic anion transporter so after this secretion furosemide comes in the thick ascending loop of Henle and there it acts on the sodium potassium chloride channels it acts by binding at the site of chloride where the chlorine binding site at the chlorine binding site furosemide binds and blocks the action of this transporter so there is no absorption of sodium chloride and potassium so that's how sodium potassium and other ions are increased in the urine they are all osmotically active so they retain water in contrast to thiazide in case of furosemide the calcium ion excretion is increased in the in the urine loop loses calcium and in case of in blood the calcium ion is decreased in case of furosemide and increased in case of thiazide okay the secondary mechanism action and second one mechanism of action is carbonic anhydrase inhibitor it increases the excretion of bicarbon but the acidosis does not develop because chlorine ion is the predominant in the urine another mechanism of action of furosemide which is very much important that is increased local prostaglandin secretion so this prostaglandin cause mainly venodilation and this will increase the venous capacitance so there will be reduced in preload so preload will be reduced and the workload on the heart will be reduced so there is quick relief in left ventricular failure and also in case of pulmonary edema so by understanding the mechanism of actions we can say that it can be used in case of edema irrespective of etiology of edema means it can be due to cardiac failure or hepatic failure or due to renal failure in any kind of edema we can use furosemide to reduce the edema second in case of left ventricular failure and in case of pulmonary edema it provides great relief third in case of cerebral edema to lower the intracranial pressure we can use furosemide Fourth, in case of, case of hypertensive emergencies, furosemide are used. But in case of hypertension, thiazides are more preferable. Furosemide is not used because due to renin angiotensin compensatory activation, there is no use of furosemide. And fourth, in case of hypercalcemia of malignancy furosemide can be used to reduce the hypercalcemia the adverse effects are like hyponatremia hypokalemia hypocalcemia or 
it may be hyperuricemia and hyperglycemia more common are hypokalemia and hyperuricemia to reduce this hypokalemia effect generally a spironolactone is used with it as a combination